what is the myth of natural law? Natural law and the related concept of natural rights play an important part in libertarian and so-called anarcho-capitalist ideology. Right libertarians are not alone in claiming that their particular ideology is based on the law of nature. Hitler, for one, claimed the exact same thing for Nazi ideology. So do other numerous, uh, so do numerous other demagogues, religious fanatics, and political philosophers. However, each likes to claim that only their natural law is the real one, when all the others are subjective impositions. Now, I'm going to ignore these assertions. I mean, they're not arguments, and concentrate on explaining why natural law, in all its forms, is well, bullshit. It's a myth. In addition. I'm going to indi- uh, I will indicate and elaborate upon its authoritarian implications. Instead of such myths, anarchists urge people to, well, usually work it out for themselves and realize that any ethical code is subjective and not a law of nature. If it's a good code, then others will be convinced of it and by your arguments and of their own intellect, and there's no need to claim it's a function of man's nature. The following books, just FYI, discuss the subject of natural law in far greater depth and are actually recommended for fuller discussion of the issues that will be raised in this section. Um, Natural Law by Robert Anton Wilson and The Myth of Natural Law by L.A. Rollins. Now, I should note that these books are written by people associated to some degree with right libertarianism and, of course, should point out that not all right libertarians subscribe to natural law theories. David Friedman, for example, does not. However, such a position seems to be the minority in right libertarianism. Ayn Rand, Robert Nozick, Murray Rothbard, among others, all subscribe to it. So I should also point out that individualist anarchist Lysander Spooner also subscribed to some natural laws, which shows that, as noted above, this concept is not limited to one particular theory or ideology. Um, So lastly, it could be maintained that it is a common straw man to maintain that supporters of natural law argue that their laws are like the laws of physics and are so capable of stopping people's actions just as the law of gravity automatically stops people flying from the earth. But that is the whole point. Using the term natural law implies that moral rights and laws that its supporters argue for are to be considered just like the law of gravity, although they acknowledge, of course, that unlike gravity, their natural laws can be violated in nature. Far from saying that the rights they support are just that, i.e. rights they think are good, they try to associate them with universal facts. For example, For example, Lysander Spooner, who, again, I must stress, used the concept of natural law to oppose the transformation of America into a capitalist society, unlike Rand, Nozick, and Rothbard, who used it to defend capitalism, stated, quote, The true definition of law is that it is a fixed, immutable, natural principle and not anything that man ever made or can make, unmake, or alter. Thus, we speak of the laws of matter and the laws of mind and the laws of gravitation, the laws of light, heat, and electricity, etc., etc., the law, of injust- uh, the law of justice is just as supreme and universal in the moral world as these others are in the mental or physical world, and it's unalterable as these are by any human power. And it is just as false and absurd to talk of anybody's having the power to abolish the law of justice and set it up in their own stead as it would be to talk of having the power to abolish the law of gravitation or any other natural laws of the universe and set it up in their own, uh, set up their own will in place of them. A letter to Grover Cleveland, page 88. My response to Spooner would just be, go read some Sterner, but whatever. Rothbard and other capitalist supporters of natural law make the same sort of claims, as we'll we'll see here in a second. Now, why, if they're aware of the fact that, unlike gravity, their natural laws can be violated, do they use the term at all? Benjamin Tucker said that natural law was a religious concept, and this provides a clue. To say, do not violate these rights, otherwise I will get cross does not have quite the same power as do not violate these rights. They are facts of nature and you are violating nature. Compare to do not violate these laws or you will go to hell. So to point out that natural law is not the same as the law of gravity because, well, it has to be enforced by humans, is not attacking some kind of straw man. It's exposing the fact that these natural laws are just the personal prejudices of those who hold on to them. If they don't want them to be exposed as such, then they should call their laws what they are, personal ethical laws, rather than attempting to compare them to facts of nature. 